Hello students, welcome back to the biology class. So in the last class we continued the 19th chapter that is excretory products and their elimination. In the last class we learned about the human urinary system. We discussed about uh, the structure of the urinary system from the NCRT also that it consists of a pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters and then we have a single urinary bladder and urethra and a part of that we also learned about the uh, renal artery and renal veins which is supposed to pass uh, which is supposed to be the uh, vascular tissue supply into the kidneys we learned that uh, the kidney is, uh, is covered kidney is a b b brown color or reddish brown color paired bean structures which are present in the abdominal portion we learned that its outer surface is convex and its inner surface is concave with a hilum which is also called as the hilus renalis Hylus renalis uh, is the point from the entry and the exit of various structures into or from the kidney. We learned that the position of the kidney is between the last thoracic and the third lumbar vertebrae. We also learned that it is somewhere around 10 to 12 cm long, 5 to 7 cm broad and 2 to 3 cm wide and it weighs around 120 to 170 gram. We discussed about that the left uh, kidney is longer narrower than the right kidney and it is slightly higher uh, 1.25 centimeter higher because of the positioning of the liver uh, presses the right kidney slightly down. We learned about the protective structures of kidney also in the last class that the two, uh, the two pairs of floating ribs the 11th and the 12th floating ribs they protect the kidney towards the dorsal side and the abdominal muscles protect it from the ventral side and apart from that kidney itself is covered with three protective layers renal capsule and renal fascia the outer and the inner one made up of fibrous tissue and the middle one is the adipose capsule which is made up of adipose tissue a shock absorber <coughs> we did the structure of internal parts of the kidney in the last class we discussed that the ls of the kidney appears to have this structure and we did it from the NCRT also that there are two portions in the renal tissue the outer is, uh, is the darker one appears granular and is rich in glomeruli, Bowman capsule, PCT and DCT and is called as the cortex and the inner one which is lighter in color appears to be striated and is rich in the loops of Hinley and connecting tubule is called as the medulla. Uh, we learned that medulla basically is positioned in the form of pyramids and there are around 8 to 18 pyramids in each kidney. <coughs> we also learned that, uh, that there are uh, calyxes or cup like structures which uh, receives the urine or which receives the tip of the uh, pyramids which are also called as papillae and then minor calyces join to form a bigger uh, calyces called as a major calyces and then from there the urine passes out into the renal pelvis and then in, and into the ureters. We also discussed about the structure of ureters in the last class that ureters are a pair of white distensible muscular tubes which are 25 to 30 centimeter long with a diameter of just 3 millimeter. <clears throat> we learned that the uh, that stretching ability is present in the ureters because of the presence of urothelium and even peristalsis is the movement of the uh, muscles which is responsible for the urine to pass down into the bladder. We discussed the structure of the bladder also in the last class that the bladder is pyriform and is, is ha it has three portions the apex, the fundus, the body part and also the third portion is the neck part. We learned that there are two sphinctures present in the uh, bladder. These sphinctures are supposed to be outer and inner sphinctures. The outer is voluntary, the inner is the involuntary one and the bladder has the ability to uh, has the capacity to to store 700 to 800 ml of urine but generally beyond 300 to 400 ml the stretch receptors present in the wall of the bladder start sending signal for the desire to cause micturition or passing of urine and beyond 500 ml the pain starts uh, so that the person feels like that he should develop the desire to urinate. We also learn about the walls of ureter and the walls of urinary bladder that they are quite similar in their composition or histology. The outermost layer is the adventitia. <coughs> the middle layer is, uh, is made up of the outer longitudinal, middle circular, inner longitudinal again smooth muscles and the innermost layer is the mucosa which is again made up of connective tissue, muscular coat 
and the urothelium similar structure is found in the wall of the urinary bladder also and we also learned the last portion of the urinary system which is the urethra urethral sphincter keeps it close except at the time of the passing out of urine we learned that male urethra is quite different from the female urethra the male urethra is longer 20 cm and it is shorter in the case of female 2 to 4 cm male urethra is curved female one is straight and then it passes both semen and urine in the case of male so it is called as the urinogenital tract and its aperture is called as the urinogenital aperture in the case of females the urethra only passes out urine so it is called as the ur urine, uh, urine, urinal uh, tract and its aperture is called as the urethral aperture and there are two sphincters in the urethra of the male and just one sphincter in the case of females and there are no subdivisions or differentiations in the portions of the urethra in female but in the case of males there are four portions urinary part prosthetic part membranous part and the longest one is the penile part which we will be learning in 12th class in detail.